And at this time, can we greet our pastor with a hearty amen. amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Certainly glad to be here today. Glad to see baby Brad back with us. We'll be looking for him to dismiss. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I certainly need your prayers. Um, uh, my mouth is hurting, but man, that's the tool that I use all the time. So I just need some prayer. Amen. Open your Bibles to the book of Jude. The Let's see, what chapter? Book of Jude. And verses 17 through 24. Verse 17 says, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and some having compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Uh, let's just stop there. Yeah, that's 24. I think I would like to use today uh, just these four words from verse 17. Remember ye the words. And I would like to use that because I think it's important for us to understand that in our walk with God, if we are going to make it, it is not because we come to church and get pumped up. It's not because when we look at our bank account, we're excited. If we're going to make it, it is because we are taking heed to the word of God. And you can't take heed to something that you don't keep in your mind. Amen. I believe the apostle wrote and said, uh, wherefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let it slip. Amen. Let them slip. The, the fact is that our minds are not, they're not like, what you see in the movies where people can memorize entire books and encyclopedias and things like that. If we don't come and get our dose of the word, after a while we'll forget it. And so we're encouraged in more than one place in the Bible to hang on to, to remember, to keep it in our mind, the things that God has said. Jude said, takes it a step further than most people like to, to acknowledge. He said the words which were spoken before of the apostles of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that brings us down to the thing that traps a lot of people when it comes to their spiritual walk. We want to listen to God. We want to read our Bible, but we don't want to listen to the preacher. We don't want to have nobody being our pastor. We can guide our own selves. And yet here, Jude says, he didn't say, hang on to the words which were spoken by Jesus. He said, to the words spoken before by the apostles. At the time the apostles were here, they were pastors and preachers and teachers. They were exhorting people. And so Jude is telling us, you're not going to get to heaven by listening to Jesus like what the world says. If you're going to hear Jesus, it's going to be through the word 
that was written by the apostles. That was one of the things that the apostles were given the responsibility to do, which was to write the New Testament. And they didn't write it based on how they felt about things. They didn't write it based on the way they saw things. They wrote the New Testament based on the Old Testament. And so you can't have a New Testament church without there being an Old Testament to go along with it. You got to have it all. Not just because it's good examples, but we ought to be able to be saved without the New Testament. We ought to be able to preach, teach, and live holy by the Old Testament. Not just the New. The New just simply explains it more clearly for us. But God, what he has wanted, has always wanted. So if we're going to do it, it's because we remember what was said. We remember what was taught, what was preached. One of the things that he tells us is that the apostles taught that in the last time, in the days that we are living in right now, there would come mockers. There would be those who make fun of church people. I don't think maybe they understood why this would happen, but God knew that it would. A lot of the ridicule that the church gets today is because of the church. It's not because the world is just so vicious and they just are looking for somebody to beat up on. No, church folks that claim to be Christians have done a lot to damage the church itself. We want to act like the devil but claim to be children of God. You, you can't do that and not think that somewhere along the line you're going to have to pay for this. Unfortunately, everybody now is paying for what some of these charlatans, some of these tricksters have done. So now we're living in a time when people are mocking the church of God. They're making fun of the church of God because we have done things worthy of being made fun of. I'm just trying to keep it real. The church has done some stuff that's really silly. Said some things that are really silly. My wife looks at some show on Netflix about church. And I was working on some pictures or something one day. And I just stopped and kind of looked up and was reading the closed caption. I said, pause that. I said, these people are supposed to be church folks? Now let me just tell you what I had saw. And I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. The wife was laying in the bed. The pastor's wife was laying in the bed. Pastor come walking in and he starts to take his pajamas, his pajama thing off, his whatever that outside thing you put on your, your robe. Yes. He starts to take his robe off. His wife laying in the bed reading her Bible. She's like this. She's laying there with her glasses on reading her Bible. Her husband comes in. The pastor now, bishop. The bishop comes in, starts to take his robe off and she said, you ain't getting in this bed. Now you sitting and reading your Bible and about to defraud your husband? We have done some silly stuff in the name of God. He said, I just want you to forgive me. She said, I feel like it would be a dishonor to God to forgive you. This is what the world sees the church as because this is what the church has been doing for many years. So there are now people who mock the church because of the church's behavior. I'm saying all this because I don't want us to walk out and feel like we're taking a stand for Jesus and being beat up for it. No, we're being beat up because of the misbehavior of other people, but not because of our stand for God. People don't care whether you stand for God or not because you ain't bothering with them. What they care about is making fun of you because you say you're taking a stand for God just like everybody else. I saw a woman on television on the news whose son was murdered by this man and they finally executed the man and they asked her what did she think about it and she said I'm glad I'm glad um, God allowed me to see this man pay for his crimes now we're going to bring God into your wrong the Bible said love your enemies I know that's a hard thing I say this all the time because we struggle to love people that get on our nerves, let alone our enemies. But when he said that this is something that we should do, how do you 
not do it because you don't remember the things that were taught by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's very clear about that. Not the apostles, but the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, folks follow anything and everything that sounds good. But we are encouraged to follow those that Jesus said to follow. We, we are of a double mind in many things. We'll spend billions of dollars in self-help books. And then turn around. Now, we, we want somebody to tell us how to live our life. We want somebody to tell us how to have a better life. We want somebody to tell us how to make right choices. And somebody to tell us how other human beings think, how they respond to things. We buy all kind of books like that. We try to fix our own selves. And then we'll turn around and say, God is going to pick a wife for me or a husband for me. And yet the Bible, I think there's only three times in the Bible when God picked a wife for somebody. Just three times. But, but today, everybody got God choosing a spouse for them. God's not picking your wife. God's not picking your husband. That's why divorce is so high. And, and, and you think divorce is high outside in the world? Divorce is getting high in the church too. And it's not because that somebody cheated on them. It's because they just tired of them. Thank you. Got the saints looking at me funny. We want them, we want God to tell us whether we should stay on our job or not. When the Bible says if a man don't work, you shouldn't be able to eat nothing if you ain't working. But you want God to tell you whether you should just quit your job and walk away. The Bible says that if any provideth not for his own, he is worse than an infidel and have denied the faith. But you want God to tell you to quit your job because you're really mad at the boss. That's not God. That's you. And I've had folks tell me that they quit because God told them to. And now they need to borrow a hundred dollars because they like that God didn't tell you to quit. I mean, people say some crazy things. We have to go to the bookstore and buy books on everything, but then sit at the table and ask God, how much salt should I put on my eggs this morning? <laughs> Lord told me only drink a half a cup of coffee today. I mean, just silly stuff. You know, Lord, should I drink regular coffee or should I drink decaf? Should I use K-cups or the French press? I mean, we just got all kind of silly stuff that we bring and try to make it be a God thing. The things we should be asking God, we go into the world for, and the things that we should be looking to the world for, we asking God for. It's just, we've got it all backwards. But that's because we don't understand the word of God. We come to God with foolishness. And let me be fair. I know the Bible says that we don't know how to pray as we ought. I know that. I've gotten to the point now to where I just pray. I tell God what I want. Let him sort it out. All I know is this is, what I, this is my desire. My desire is for this, this, and this. But the Holy Ghost got to be interceding on my behalf because I don't know what I should be praying for anyway. You know, I, I have saints that will come to me and say, well, you know, I, I just don't know how to pray about this situation. No, you don't. None of us know how. And just because I'm the pastor doesn't mean that I know how to pray about it. I don't. I just pray for what I want. It's taken me a while to get there, but I'm there now. I'm at the point now to where I just tell God, this is what's in my heart. This is what I want. I don't know what's best. I just know this is what looks right to me right now. And hopefully, prayerfully, God is going to do the right thing. Well, oh, come on, God will do the right thing. Okay. God's going to do what's right because I don't know what's right. It's too complicated, too far over my head. Strategies about things that's going on, about people that's not even born yet that we don't know about. It, it is. We just don't know. And there's no way for us to know. All I can say is, Lord, I'd like a raise on my job. But God knows whether I need it or not. Lord, I want my wife to leave me alone about putting my shoes 
by the door. And if he don't answer that prayer, I just got to start moving my shoes, that's all. When he says this, he's making a difference between seeking God for something and avoiding our responsibilities in things. And usually that's what I see when people are confused about the things of God it's because they're trying to avoid doing what they know they should do. We come up with all kinds of explanations. Well, they said thus and so to me. And so I said this back to them. And I'm like, why did you say anything? Why didn't you just keep quiet? Well, because, and then they got a reason why they said something, a reason why they did something. And, and finally, I just got mad and, and I punched him. Amen. I'm not talking about nobody here. I'm talking about other folks. We do that. And then we're confused. Was I wrong? <laughs> I, I feel like, now, now after you've cussed them out, I, I, had, a, I had a person, a preacher actually say one time, they're just words. Oh, no, 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 it ain't just words. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. It's more than just words. It really is. And, and vain and profane babbling leads to more ungodliness. That's, that's scripture too. So you ungodly to start with and, and just using cuss words, it makes you more ungodly. That's all. So you don't have to come and ask me, was I wrong? Yeah, he was wrong. Amen. You know, my, my, my wife asked me if I wanted to, I wasn't feeling too good, so she got me a, a shot glass full of some gin and honey. <laughs> Amen. Well, that's what he did. All right, let me just stop. <laughs> Remember ye the words. This, this implies a couple of things. One, that you heard it in the first place. You can't remember something that you've never known. Now, there are, there are scientists who debate time travel and things like that, and they go back and forth, and I find it interesting. But the bottom line is I can remember the past, but I can't remember the future because it hasn't happened yet. So that's not possible. If, if time was the way they say it was, eventually we should be able to remember the future because it's already done, but it's not. Only God can remember the future. Because he's already there. Amen. Amen. So it's not no problem for him. It's a problem for us. But not for him. So if I'm going to remember the words, I have to have heard the words or read the words already before. So remembering means that I've already done something. And, and the other part of this is that I need to take action. I've got to get up and come to church. I have to break open my Bible and read. I can't sit around and expect God to drop stuff in my heart. And there are people that do that. They're waiting for God to tell them something, but they ain't going to open their Bible. They just sit and talk, and now I'm just waiting for the Lord to answer me. No, you got to open your Bible. That's where our answers are. They're in the Word of God. And so we want this. We want the things to come to us. We want... The, the answer to just appear, but it's not going to if you've never read your Bible. Peter said it like this. Wherefore they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. When you don't go out and do what they're doing, when you're not participating in what they participate in, they're going to speak evil of you. Let me go back to what I said at the very beginning of this, which is the church has damaged their own self because we got church folks that go out and get drunk. And then when you say you're not going to, they're looking at you funny because they expect you to act like the other folks that they've been hanging out with. When they steal, they expect you to steal because they've hung out with other Christians that stole. Not brother Christian, just Christians in general. I, I, don't, I don't want the brother to feel like I'm... <laughs> so 
by the time you come around and you taking a stand for what is right, they think it's strange that you're not doing what the other Christians, the, the so-called Christians have been doing. Why won't you? Go ahead and punch me in. I'll be there in 10 minutes. But if I get one more point, I'm going to get fired. Well, I can't do that. That's stealing. That's lying. I can't do that. I'm not going to participate in that. I can't punch you in. Now they mad at you. Well, why won't you? Because that's wrong. Well, Jim used to do it, and he was a Christian. See, that's, that's how this trouble starts. Because we've got so many people doing wrong that claim to be serving God. But then he turns around and tells us, but beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which are to try you. So don't think it's strange when they get angry at you because you don't do what they do. And don't think it's strange when the devil starts to attack. You know why? Because the enemy is going to attack. He that would live godly maketh himself a prey. You are setting yourself up to be attacked anytime you decide, I'm going to live for God. It's coming. Trouble's on the horizon. I've, uh, I know folks that kind of stay towards the edge, the, the borderline, just in case, because they don't want too many problems, too many trials. If you live godly, you're going to suffer some persecution. You're going to have some problems. Amen. I just want you to understand, it's not all pie in the sky. It's not going to be always joy, joy, joy. Come to church and get your joy. But understand, when you leave, you've got to fight on your hands. Sometimes you got to fight on your hands when you get here. You don't know who's up in this place. And just because somebody got the Holy Ghost don't mean they ain't going to let themselves be a devil neither. There's plenty of folks got the Holy Ghost. Baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Joy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, happy. Till you make them mad. And then we got a problem. We want... God to tell us what, what our purpose is. You know, you know that book, The Purpose Driven Life? Y'all heard about that? Don't read that foolishness. See that stuff alone. The Bible tells us what our purpose is. We have one purpose, and that is to do His will. And the Bible says it like that, too. That we, Our purpose is to do His will. Uh, don't worry about what your purpose is with anything else. You do his will, and everything in your life will fall into place. It's that simple. You don't have to have no philosophy. You don't have to know no psychology, nobody's book. You got this book right here that tells you how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife, how to be a good parent. It's hard sometimes, but the Bible tells us how to do these things. And when we do them, everything in our life will fall into place like it should be. Will I be attacked? I sure will. But I know that I'm doing exactly what I should be doing. And I'm right with God. Jude wasn't talking to the world. He's talking to the church. He's telling church people, remember ye the words of the apostles. Don't get it in your head that you can save your own self. Don't get it in your mind that God's going to talk to you and God's going to teach you. I don't have to go to church. I got the Bible. I can read just like everybody else. No, you can't. All right, I'll, I'll leave that alone. Ch ch churches today, they're not teaching the things of God. A lot of them are teaching prosperity, financial prosperity. A lot of them are teaching about get yours now. When was the last time you heard a televangelist talk about the rapture. They don't even talk about that no more. It, you, it, they, first it was, we need to cut the blood songs out. Anything that's talking about blood, well, that's just morbid. We don't want that in our songbook. So they came out with new songbooks that removed all the songs about the blood of Jesus in it. I'm not making that up. That's for real. They removed the songs about the blood. You turn on any Christian radio station and listen to the songs. Ain't nobody talking about the blood of Jesus. They're talking about him and his. That's what they're talking about. They ain't even saying Jesus hardly no more. They'll talk about the lamb, but they ain't going to say Jesus. They'll talk about the father. They'll talk about God, but they ain't saying too much about Jesus. They took that out of the songs, but it was the blood that saved us. 
If it wasn't for that blood, we wouldn't have what we have today. But they've taken that out of the songbooks now. That's why I don't fuss too much about us singing these old hymnals. Yeah, the, these hymns, they, they, they talk about the blood of Jesus. It's that blood. Like the song says, the blood that gives me strength from day to day. He will never lose his power. That blood is still saving. That blood is still cleaning. That blood is still helping people right now. So I don't want to lose all of that. But then after a while, they, they cha- went from changing the songs to, now, who wants to be a hellfire and damnation preacher? Nobody wants to hear all of that. So then the preacher stopped. First we stopped the songs, then the preacher stopped talking about hell. Nobody wants to hear about that. They want to hear what God's going to do for them. They, they want somebody to preach a jubilee message to them, something to get them excited and stirred up and happy. That's what people want to hear. So they stopped that. Now, they don't even talk about heaven no more. You listen to these preachers. They don't talk about heaven. We have cut God completely out the picture. If the scriptures that we read don't talk about what I'm getting ready to get, I don't want to hear about it. We have walled God out of his own church. Churches today, they're teaching people how to get their senses excited. Things that's going to turn you on. Things that's going to get you happy. Go out and do what's going to make you have joy. Well, I'm here to tell you, joy comes from the Holy Ghost. The Bible says he will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. You want joy? Keep your mind stayed on him. Not on psychology, but on him. And then Jude goes on and he says, but ye, now he's talking to the church. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. We got something we got to do. Building up ourselves in our most holy faith. Matter of fact, uh, in the book of Jude, he says this on, in verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Who's able to do that? God is able to do that, right? Yes, God is able to keep you from falling. But then why are so many people falling if God's able to keep you from falling? That's because they don't want it. They don't want what God has. He can keep you from falling if you want him to. But do you want him to? In the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20, he says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God can do way more. You know what the word to exceed means? When you tell somebody that the speed limit is 55 and you go 56, you have exceeded the maximum, right? He said, I am able to do exceeding. I can go beyond the things that anybody can even think. Isn't that what he said? What, I can go beyond what you ask. I can go beyond what you think. What is it that you want God to do? He said, I can go beyond that. How? Through the power that worketh in you. You can't just sit at home and expect God to do it for you. How do I know that? Because Jude said, building up your most holy faith. You've got to build it. You've got to work on it. You have to get up and do something. You can't sit back and wait for the pastor to build up your faith. You can't expect your husband or your wife to build up your faith. You can't expect the ministry to build up your faith. Well, I stay busy at the church. You better get the word down in you. It takes more than just staying busy. You've got to build up your faith through the word of God. And it's not going to happen by sitting at home playing Nintendo. No. Man, do they still have Nintendo systems out? <laughs> they do? Amen. Right. I started to say Sega Genesis, but I don't even think they make those anymore. They don't? Amen. See, I was on the right track. Y'all think I'm old. He said, keep yourselves in the love of God. Who's going to do that? You got to do that. You can't expect God to save you and then keep you saved. You got to build up your own faith. You got to keep your own self in the love of God. 
How do I do that? Through the word of God. I've got to remember the words that were spoken. He didn't say for you to remember. He said, remember ye, you all, everybody, not the preachers, not the teachers, not the exhorters. It's not up to us to remember the word for other people. I got to remember for myself. You've got to remember for yourself. When you come and you get taught, you got to remember it. You got to hang on to it. You got to refresh your memory from time to time. You got to get the word out and you've got to dust off your Bible. Go home and dust it off. Pull it out. Amen. Open it up. Well, where, what, what, how do I start studying? Open it up and just start reading. Amen. I know that uh, this isn't a pleasant thing, but God's not going to save you and keep you saved. He's not going to do that. Nowhere in the Bible does God does it say that God's going to keep you saved. It says he's able. He can. But will he? It's based on you. You want to stay saved? You got to work on you. You want to be right with God? You got to work on you. You want to get saved? You got to work on you. You can sit out in the audience all you want to. God ain't going to dump the Holy Ghost on you just because you you. I don't want folks seeing me walk up there because then they might think that God's not going to save you just because of that. I don't care how famous you are. I don't care how great of a singer you are. I tell you, you think of the biggest movie star you want. If they want to get the Holy Ghost, they're going to have to hit the altar just like everybody else. God's not going to save them just because they're famous. You know why? Because all souls belong to him anyway. So your soul is no, no more important than any other soul. Amen. Remember ye the words that were spoken by the apostles. Remember them, saints. Keep them in your heart. Do like David said. Hide his word in your heart that you might not sin against him. Keep it there. Always have the word. And if you don't have an answer, don't answer till you get it from the word. I've become extremely careful now, very careful of what I say because I need to make sure it's coming from the Bible. Because if it's not, then all it's going to lead to is trouble down the road. Amen. Sometimes I just have to tell folks, I don't know. I have to find out. I have to study. I know there's somewhere in the Bible. I know every answer is in the Bible. I just don't know. Sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it comes right away. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you go to this and but you know how come I remember sometimes? Because I've read it. Amen. There's a whole lot of stuff you could fix yourself if you just read it. You can't be your own pastor. You can't stay saved just because of your own will or you read your own Bible for you. It's not like that. But there's a whole lot of answers you could have simply because you know the word and you remember. This is... I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. You got to recall. You got to remember. Amen? Amen? Elder Pompey, come and give our altar call.